decades. I'm joined by guests Hala and Christy, who work with undergrad students every day to talk about the university being accessible to virtually anyone looking to get a college education. And tell me, you have an event coming up scheduled for January 4th. Tell me about it, Hala. Yes, we have our Rocket One Stop event. We held one in the summer, and it was very, very successful. Um, we had 81% of our students who attended enrolled on that day. We're hoping to see similar numbers. Um, so with Rocket One Stop, students who are adult transfer and then the CCP population are able to complete pretty much every single step to enrollment on that day. It's a very open house style. Um, and yeah, we have our enrollment management team, our advising team, financial aid, everyone there to help them enroll and become a rocket. So Christy, uh, how, how has it gotten to where, uh, what do you think overall in college level, uh, everywhere across the country, we've gone from you know undergrads, uh, kids out of high school, and now we're getting more adults looking for a change in career path or maybe just like, you know what, I'm going to just ditch this career and go in something else or, or somebody just uh, decided late in life to go to college. No, absolutely. The other thing we're seeing a lot of, especially post-COVID, is a lot of high school students choosing not to go to college directly out of high school and taking a year or two off mm -hmm. and then kind of resetting and coming back to college at that, at that time. But absolutely, we are definitely seeing more adult and transfer students. And many of them are students that are looking for a second career we also have a lot of them that started college and for one reason or another weren't able to finish at that time looking to come back and those are all great populations for this program coming up on January 4th. You mentioned COVID with that like the whole education industry is different yes. uh, and I, I as an adult who was able to go through my high school years and go to prom uh, go to college and be able to party and go and do events <laughs> live in a dormitory meet a lot of kids I know of a family and, and their, their, their kids, like their first year of school was online. Mm -hmm. That's, that just seems like you were robbed of a wonderful college experience. How have you found that, that maybe kids are making up for that now or can we ever go back? I think students now are actually wanting more in-person stuff than what we saw pre-COVID. Because pre-COVID, a lot of people were much more up to, oh, it's fine, I can go another time, or I can just look that up online, or what have you. But post-COVID, they're actually wanting a lot of in-person activity. They're wanting a lot of in-person events. So we're actually seeing a little bit of a resurgence in that wanting that in-person experience. And so that's why we think events like this are a great fit. We still have virtual virtual options for people to reach out with the schedule events virtually because it works best with their schedule. But more and more we're seeing people really wanting that in-person experience. Hollow, that surprises me because I, I, I thought it, it seems like like too many people uh, got too comfortable working at home <laughs> and too many students were comfortable uh, going to school. But, but again, I know from my viewpoint, because I'm a little ADD, I could not have survived. I could not have gotten an education online. I could not sit there in a class every day watching you teach me, watching you teach me, I would, I would be flatlining. My education would be stopped. Um, so I'm surprised that, that students are really wanting to have that in-person thing again. So from my experience, both in administration and in the classroom, students really prefer a very blended option where, you know, there are some classes, well, yeah, you can take that online, but they like the interaction with the professor and with their uh, classmates. They really see the value in that. And it's kind of like going back to more of the traditional way with some flexibility in there. How are colleges, I mean, you guys were around the university, how, how are colleges able to still teach students during that period of time. I know the, the elementary schools, the junior highs, the high schools had trouble getting, getting a quality education because it was just a, diff a disconnect. Um, are, are we able to, to make up for that time or how has that been going in looking back at it? I think the colleges were a little better situated for that kind of uh, experience, better, more so than like the elementary schools, because we already had the online college program. So many universities already offered fully online degree programs, so we were able to tap into the resources and the technology that was available through those platforms and kind of quickly pivot to a fully online platform. But I think, as Holla mentioned, we're all very excited to have more of an in-person experience now. How is the recruiting game going uh, for you? University of Toledo, uh, this region uh, nationally, because uh, you know a big talking point lately has been people are suffocated by student loan debt. 
uh, and, and there's been a big push for trade schools, finding a career, uh, learning how to be a, a auto a, a, a airplane mechanic, mm -hmm. go right into that instead of going, getting your degree, then going into that and maybe avoiding a lot of that high debt. Sure, absolutely. We're seeing a lot more conversations about partnerships with community colleges. Lately, the University of Toledo has signed a few different um, partnership agreements with local community colleges to kind of help students that are more interested in kind of going a different route first before going traditional route directly to a four-year institution. But I also think this is where Toledo's tuition guarantee comes into play as being a big part of this, where we guarantee not only for tuition, but also their housing and their fees for the entirety of their, well, for the four years that they're at the University of Toledo. I think that is something that students are very interested in versus knowing that every semester or every year, my tuition and fees are probably going to go up at least a couple percentage points. Whereas for us, we have that, we can go out with that guarantee and tell them for the four years that you're here, this is what you're going to pay in tuition. This is what you're going to pay in fees and in housing. That's a really big benefit for uh, students. Real quick, out of time, real quick, January 4th, what's the hours of this and where? From 10 a.m. to 7 and uh, Rocket Hall at Rocket the University Hall. of Toledo. Hala, Christy, thank you so much for being here. Thank, thank you. you for having us.